This video is a space video, so if that's not your thing, then skip past it and come back later. There will be another normal video up probably tomorrow. So I know that I uh, post a lot of videos about SpaceX, and then just the other day I posted the uh, the Blue Origin video. Uh, that's the the same guy who owns Amazon owns the company. Blue Origin, and I, I showed that one the other day. Well, uh, just yesterday, NASA and Russia's space agency, Roscosmos, just launched three new astronauts up to the International Space Station. Again, I enjoy all the stuff, not just SpaceX. It's all cool to me. But when the space shuttle program ended in 2011, between then and now, America really didn't have a way to send astronauts up, so what they did was they basically hitched a ride with Russia. They bought a seat on the Russian Soyuz rocket, which holds three men, so they, usually it would be two Russians and one American. Sometimes it would be one Russian, one European Space Agency astronaut, and one American, but they, they basically just paid Russia millions and millions of dollars for one U.S. astronaut to get a seat on their Soyuz rocket. Russia launches all of its rockets from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. And uh, the American astronauts, they have to fly to Russia. They have to do Russian training. They also have to speak both English and Russian to be able to go to the International Space Station on one of these Soyuz rockets. Uh, they have to be able to understand the machine. There's so. the first umbilical tower separating from the booster. Launch. Second umbilical now separating. Ignition. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Intermediate. Main lift and lift off. Kate Rubin, Sergey Rishikov, and Sergey Kuzberchkov now on their way to the International Space Station, the latest in a chain that spans almost 20 years of continuous human presence in space. Ten seconds. The parameters of the rocket are nominal. Twenty seconds. The thrusters of the first and second stage are operating nominally. Hearing first good reports of a good first stage performance, everything looking nominal. Jettison. Escape tower has been jettisoned. Separation of the side units. And there is the separation of the four strap on boosters that are jettisoned. Rocket parameters are nominal. All still looking good, and the next milestone we're looking for is the jettison of the launch shroud at 2 minutes and 37 seconds. And you see that launch shroud jettison. We're now getting uh, some views from the external rocket camera. Copy you. Looking towards the bottom of this rocket uh, and at the Earth below, solar arrays waiting to be unfurled once the spacecraft reaches orbit safely. With it gone, Soyuz is now being prope propelled by a single engine of its third stage. That engine provides 67,000 pounds of thrust and will burn for four minutes and two seconds. The third stage cut off and separated as planned. Single liquid-fueled engine shut down and dropped away at an altitude of 126 miles above the Earth. And there you see now also the Soyuz have unfurled. That's a key milestone as well. And you can see there the International Space Station coming into view from the Soyuz cameras. We'll be working to get it lined up with uh, that cross in the middle right there at the top uh, left-hand corner of the screen, you can see the Soyuz MS-17 with its three-person crew inside. Kate Rubens, Sergei Rizhikov, and Sergei Kuzmirchkov all uh, ready to make their way to the International Space Station. Uh, this mission today is different in that normal missions going from orbit to the International Space Station could take anywhere from four orbits around Earth all the way up to two days of orbiting Earth just to catch up with the space station and get up on its orbit. 
Well, they did it in just two orbits today. They burned their engines longer, got going faster, and they caught up with the space station in just two orbits around our Earth. Basically, they, they get up in, ahead of it, and then they slow down slowly until they dock with the space station. Your go. We put in the command at 11.37.20. Copy. Copy final so approaches and work. The Russian soy using the American-made rockets are a lot different. Um, the Russian rocket there, it, it basically three sections. The two sections on the top are astronaut inhabitable, and then the section on the bottom is the engine compartment. When they get ready to leave to come back to Earth, they will undock from the space station. As you can see, they're almost they're right there at it. But they'll undock from the space station, and only that middle section will fall back to Earth. It's the only area that has a heat shield on it. Vis visual range about five meters. Small deviation along the pitch. Copy. You can see the uh, orbital module of the Soyuz there, just about lined up and coming in for the docking on the ROSVET module of the International Space Station. Soyuz has arrived at the International Space Station at the ROSVET module. You will have to do the deactivation of the vehicle. Uh, you will be told later at what time. It is page 25 of the procedure dash 38, step 4. And there you see the hatch open at 6.07 a.m. Central Time. We are observing how you're opening the hatch. And the first uh, chance to float inside for the newcomer to space, Sergei Kudspirchkov, who's making his first, uh, first trip to the International Space Station, followed there by NASA astronaut Kate Rubens on her second uh, journey to the space station. <laughs> and the final crew member to arrive, Soyuz Commander Sergei Ryzhkov. Good to see you. And yeah, that's that. All three are there. That mission, uh, in a, I think in about a week, three astronauts will be coming back from the space station, including uh, NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy. So uh, that'll be an interesting update as well. So. Uh, Hopefully, you guys who stuck around, who like this space stuff, hopefully you enjoyed this. It's always great to, to see this kind of stuff, man. I love it.